and welcome to SBN News, the show that provides you with a weekly digest of all things SBN, our member news, and introduces you to some of the business leaders in our community. I'm Kendra Byers, the Head of Community and Strategic Partnerships. And I'm Scott, the Head of Marketing at SBN. It's been a busy week as we're approaching the St Andrew's Day celebration on Monday. And on Wednesday this week, we hosted our event in partnership with the Institute of Hospitality focusing on the subject of building resilience and the appreciation of the hospitality industry. We were joined by over 200 attendees from the US, UAE, Singapore and across the UK to all hear from a great lineup of speakers that were passionate about the hospitality industry. The replays are now live for you to catch up and you can access them via the link in the description. What else have we been up to, Scott? Yeah, thanks, Kendra. There's been, a, as is every week, it's been busy across the membership. As you mentioned, we did that one day digital conference with the Scottish branch of the Institute of Hospitality. There was some really insightful panel sessions and interesting interviews throughout. Uh, and you, as Kendra said, you can catch all the highlights of that and the replays on the website. The link will be in the description of this video. Um, SBM member Alan Burst also hosted a seminar at this week's Virtual Granite Expo. It was all about optimising your supply chain. Uh, our chairman, Russell, um, was part of the discussion at this month's STV Growth Academy session. Um, he was talking with a bunch of people all about how to build a flexible marketing plan, um, which is really good for anticipating things that might not come up, such as a lockdown. Um, Bart from PB Link uh, hosted his 2020 Congress of Polish Entrepreneurs in the UK. That was originally supposed to be a big conference in London, but Bart did a really good job taking that online and turning it into a digital experience. Um, Ruby Sweeney, who was featured in the most recent episode of the SBN podcast series, hosted her Netwoman Lunch and Learn with Yvonne Webb of Action Coach. There's going to be more of them in the series, I believe, so keep an eye on that. And our friends at Scotland Is had another edition of their Preparing for Brexit, Brexit series, and it was talking all about how to attract and retain graduate talent. Um, but then um, that was all this week. There's more exciting things to look forward to next week. We've got our St Andrew's Day celebration on the 30th. We've had members um, send in their videos um, throughout the week, which we'll be sharing. There's been some rainbows and sterling, sunsets and lards, uh, puppies on the south coast, and even sunny LA beaches, which made me very jealous to watch. Um, the whiskey and chocolate experience we covered a couple of weeks ago is also happening next week. All those attendees will be expecting their um, chocolate and whiskey deliveries very soon, which is exciting. And um, two members are coming together for a virtual glass of wine next week. Um, Carbon Financial are going to be sitting down for a conversation with Scottish artist Gerard Burns, and you can sign up to that event on Eventbrite. Uh, and finally, Andrew Hood of Lynchpin Analytics is teaming up with Scottish Enterprise to deliver a masterclass on data analytics and what it's actually good for. Uh, so that's all for next week, Kendra. What are we doing today? That was an amazing round up there, Scott. Um, well, today we've got two guests and I'm going to introduce the first guest, which is Rachel McClelland, founder of Planet Shine. Hi there. Thanks so much Hello, for having Rachel. me. How are you doing? Nice to have you. Yeah, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. Yes. Come Amazing. So if we can kick off by just having you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about Planet Shine. Yeah, great. So I'm Rachel McClelland, uh, founded Planet Shine three years ago and Planet Shine is part eco consultancy, um, film production company and media platform. So the media platform is a global platform which sits at the intersection of environmentalism, human and animal rights, but in a very mainstream way. So we tell really interesting, entertaining stories and make films all around the world. And we also work with brands on the eco side of things. So we're currently working with brands like Quorn Foods, Silent Night, The Mattress Company and The Body Shop. Amazing. Yeah, I've been catching up on some of your short films and top of, topical conversations and there's something that I've came across recently, but there's a great calibre of speakers that you've got joining you and the content is phenomenal. So what's your story and what led you to launch in Planet Shine? Well, yeah, so I spent 15 years in um, the film and media industry. So I worked in feature films, music videos, very naively about 15 years ago, set up my own production company um, and ended up doing some really good jobs. So I'm going to name drop a bit, which is really gross. But, you know, people like Jay-Z, Rihanna, Calvin mm -hmm. Harris, but had an amazing time. Um, and then 
also got to the point that um, had a bit of an awakening and I was thinking I'm loving doing this work and making films and music videos but I want to do something which kind of has a bit more meaning so uh, 10 years ago I moved back to Lancashire where I'm from originally I'd been in London for nearly 10 years and um, moved back to Lancashire in a very rural area and reconnected with the countryside which is the best thing that I ever did um, and then I did a master's in innovation management, which is when I came across um, the triple bottom line framework, people, planet and profit. And it really resonated with me. I'm really ambitious, but this, this notion of you can be really ambitious and, you know, start business, grow business and be really successful whilst also doing lots of good and helping the planet, helping other people, you know. Um, so I be, began my sustainability journey 10 years ago and then over the last few years started working with very ethical brands who, you know, like Quorn Foods we've been making films for for a few years now. Um, and then I, I basically one day was thinking I need to do more, I want to do more to help the planet. Um, I'm really passionate about environmentalism, rewilding animals. Um, and I thought I want to do more. It's great working with like-minded brands because obviously you can help them with their purpose-driven messages and make them into amazing films. But I wanted to do something which would also offer something to global citizens to kind of plant that seed of ethical living. And that's when Planet Shine was born. And um, we're just kind of, we've just taken on a new content director who's based in Los Angeles, who's absolutely brilliant. Um, and, and we seem to be growing really well. We've got private investors um, and lots of really interesting projects underway at the moment. So it's a really exciting time. Amazing. And you can see how passionate you are. And we love a name drop on this show that's welcomed. And actually, Calvin Harris is from um, my local hometown, uh, Dumfries uh, Galloway. Yeah. And he actually used to work in uh, the same fish factory that my mum used to work in before, before his days of making big hits. So. <laughs> that's about, oh gosh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned working with companies and brands. So are you able to kind of give us some details on how you help them and support them on their journey to identifying their purpose and making better decisions. Yeah, absolutely. So first and foremost, what's really exciting, obviously I think everybody knows we're in the midst of this climate emergency and, and it's not all doom and gloom. There's so much opportunity in this sustainability revolution that we're in. There's a, a tremendous amount of opportunity for individuals and for brands. I, I think the stats are something like 87% of um, global citizens are actively seeking ethical products and services. Um, and a lot of the work that um, brands have done um, suggests that there's some really um, <clears throat> interesting ways to grow business as well as make cost savings. So I think there was a Harvard report which suggested that um, businesses that embed sustainability and align it with their growth strategy can see on average a 20% increase in profit. So the business case is just, you know, spot on. It's kind of why wouldn't you? So what we do is we work with brands, all kinds of brands from tiny SMEs to big global brands. And we, we basically, if a brand needs it, we start with the basics and look at where, what a brand's doing now in terms of their impact, in terms of their carbon footprint. Quite often, or more often than not, most brands are doing a lot of really positive work and perhaps just not writing it down in the form of policies or whatever, or, or structuring it, you know. So we help embed sustainability, make sure things are measured, recorded and tracked, you know. Um, <clears throat> so we work on that, you know, some brands are obviously really far along the journey of sustainability. So they just need a bit more advanced help. Um, and then some brands also want help with B Corp accreditation. So B Corp is um, a really robust certificate which analyzes brands according to everything from what they do for their local communities, what they do in their supply chain, their environmental impacts. So it's a really good framework and it helps a brand embed an annual impact report as well. So we do all that sort of sciencey type piece, but what we're not about is just letting all of that great work sit in a drawer you know we don't write huge strategies and you know they just sit there not really having much value what we're about is then um, amplifying that work so we align it with a brand's communication strategy find the sort of the really interesting stories that a brand could be shouting about in terms of you know maybe what they're doing in their local community what they're doing to reduce carbon footprint maybe they've got some amazing new innovation that they're working on 
and we pinpoint those stories and turn them into content, whether it's sort of short social media cut downs and, and clips or longer form documentary type pieces. Um, and it works really well. And then obviously we, we can host them on our platform as well if, um, if it's a good fit. But basically everything we do is about storytelling. It has to be about, you know, interesting and, and, and entertaining stories. Amazing, that, that's fantastic. Because you often find that when you speak to business leaders, in the conversation, they highlight these great things that they're doing and you think, why aren't you amplifying that with a wider audience or sharing these things? Yeah. And actually, it's learning for other companies in the community as well. So, no, it's great that you're amplifying those great stories. Now, I wanted to take you back to May. You ran an amazing event with global speakers, over 40 speakers, over three days, sharing 350 lockdown lessons. I wanted to ask you, what's your lockdown lesson or was there a favourite that was highlighted during the Shine Fest? Oh gosh, so yeah, my favourite, I, I spoke to Captain Paul Watson who founded Sea Shepherd and he's one of the, he was one of the, mate, the original founders of Greenpeace and then lit, jumped ship, pardon the pun, and set up Sea Shepherd as a, a much more sort of grassroots active organisation and he's quite scary because he's he's amazing at talking and he just knows his stuff so I was on a zoom with him and he to me he's just like oh my god I'm not worthy you know and uh, he, he's just fascinating and does amazing work he's on um, Interpol's red list because I think it's Japan um, have some sort of international warrant out for his arrest so he still can't leave America at the moment <clears throat> excuse me and he's just fascinating and he just lives to help the oceans because he's kind of if we don't save the oceans you know there won't be any human species able to survive on the planet you know and it's re we're at this really critical point so he was just i mean that was just an absolute honor to speak to him and then um, and then a lady natalie isaacs who founded one million women in australia so they're a sort of environmental feminist organization i know a lot of people are scared by the word feminist because it kind of it suggests images of you know really hardline feminists you know but it's actually just about well anybody can be a feminist you know man or woman boy or girl you know and natalie's approach is just really inclusive and she's really passionate and she's got a million as the name suggests a million women one million women she's got a million women as part of this global organization and um, and so just i think for me obviously when we started lockdown everybody was a bit like gosh this is really unnerving and all of our brand shoots were obviously put on hold in that first few weeks, which is why we decided to do a virtual summit and make it all free and just kind of to give people a little bit of hope and inspiration. And I think for me, just the honour of talking to people all over the world, it just filled me with hope. Um, because I, I think sometimes doing the work we do, it's too easy to look at the negatives and think and look at the problems and you know everything we do at shine is solutions focused but sometimes you know it becomes you kind of carry a lot on your shoulders and just talking to these people you, it, you i just by the end of it i thought i know we can save the planet i know we can all kind of live in harmony i know we can and it sounds very idealistic which i do tend to view the the, the world through rose tinted glasses but it just filled me with hope um, and also, you know, that thought of, I know we can do this and we can create a better world. Amazing. Well, I've seen some of the, the sessions that you'd uploaded onto YouTube and promoted on Instagram. And like I say, they were fantastic. And it was great that you shared that free and the content is still there. So Scott and I will make sure that in the description, we share a link to Shinefest so that people can also enjoy that content. But thank you for joining us, Rachel. It was a pleasure to hear from you today. Thanks for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Is there another guest to join us today, Scott? There is indeed. I'd like to welcome Jimmy McGowan live from the Isle of Harris. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. <laughs> is it too soon? It's not too soon at all. Um, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming you with young kids in the house, you're going to be Santa full time for the next five weeks. <laughs> well, this was actually my outfit before I had kids. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody can get their lists into Santa, care of Essence of Harris website within the next week or two. We'll do our best to make sure everybody's happy on the 25th of December this year. And people need it more than ever, so we thank you for that, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, uh, uh, th- cool. thank you for thank you for uh, for joining us. Uh, I wasn't really sure whether to introduce you as a Scottish business leader or a Scottish TV star. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about Secret Scotland and how you ended up on Channel 5. Yes, hi guys, how are you? Very good. Yes, we we got contacted a few months ago um, by Channel 5 to see if we would like to take part in the show. It was on the back of when the pandemic first broke out and the various works we had done with the sanitizer and the community, etc. Plus also growing the brand internationally into America and the awards we'd won in New York, etc., etc. So they were quite enthused by this small, sort of relatively unknown brand from the Outer Hebrides, um, such a small population in 1916, but seemed to be punching way above their weight. So they came and we had a bit of, the, the show producers came to see me and we sat down and they were pretty inspired by the culture and the team here and what was going on. So they decided, yep, let's slot you in there and We'll see how it goes. So we had an amazing day filming here. So it was really, really, really positive with them. And then, as you've seen, the show was not just positive for us on Friday, but it was positive um, in general for the whole island, which is absolutely paramount. You know, it's not just about Essen Saharas. It's about the north of Scotland and Scotland. Well, it's about Scotland, basically. You know, we need to be powerful than now. It's not a demon. Yeah, uh, that's something you've always been quite passionate about. And I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the process you went through um, when distilling and making the uh, antibacterial gel. Because I know you, you, you sort of reached out to a bunch of people across the islands and the highlands to get them involved. Yeah, well, that's why it's called Spirit of the Hebrides. We, we reached out to the local distillery and they supplied the alcohol. We reached out to the, the fish farm for one of the products that we needed for it. We reached out to the local bakery to get the another product that we needed for it. You know, so one of the local labeling manufacturers went in and printed off labels, even though he was in lockdown. You know, so it just had to pull it together to get it into people's hands when it became absolutely paramount and people needed it. And then in the long run, it's actually became a sustainable business of its own now. So it stands on its side as well. It's pretty ironic, but we now have an extra business on top of the, businesses that I already had before we went in so you know just what I needed <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah M- more things to do that's what you needed <laughs> um, uh, so uh, uh, although Essence of Harris is in a very different 2020 to what I can imagine you've originally envisioned um, there has been some good news as you mentioned you were award winners in New York you've also appeared in editions of Vogue in China uh, and you've also now got a, an additional business on top of your other many hats I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about how business has changed for you in the last six months? Well, for us, it's obviously, it's been, it was pretty catastrophic with two stores having it. Well, they didn't have to close. I made the decision in March as soon as long, lockdown hit that from seeing what happened in other countries that um, airports were going to be affected immeasurably by this for years to come. So we closed down our airport um, stores in Aberdeen and Inverness immediately when other people were still swithering about what was what was happening we shut those doors and pulled out straight away which limited the impact on costs we then reutilized that money and pushed it and pushed it for an online first model um we had to close the glasgow store unfortunately and then we reopened that and then we closed that again last friday for three weeks so it's been but we still love our presence in princey square and we've had a very very positive impact there as well in the glasgow market and the harris shop because we're level one is still open but we are definitely driving towards a um, online first model. Um, we've just struck a huge deal with a company in America that's just wow. committed to ten thousand of our products um, straight out of the first order. Um, a luxury bath company. Um, so for us, you know, the China stuff's grown arms and legs right away. So for us, it's the same as SBN. It's all about your network. It's all about relationships. You know, we're working with local HIE at the moment to build an extension on your factory to double the size of our factory by summer 2021. So, you know, it's very positive, but, you know, it's only positive because we have worked harder than anybody that we know. Um, we have dug deep. I am at my desk at half four every morning, working, working hard, refocusing, being agile. And as Rachel said, it is all about the story but the story has to be unique. It has to be true. Your products have to be 
perfect and they have to be outstanding because it's repeat business that will build your business worldwide. Anybody can sell something once, I believe. You know, and we have got an amazing culture under this roof, and that is the only reason that we continue to grow. Young, dynamic team, mostly people, ninety percent under thirty-year-old people. You know, that are just outstanding, basically. I always enjoy talking to you, Jamie. You're always you're always one for filling people with inspiration. Um, yeah. I, I wanted to ask a little bit now because, um, as as you looked a little bit earlier, we're officially in the run-up to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wondered if you, if you could tell us a little bit about what's going on at Essence of Harris and any exciting things that are happening this festive season. Yeah, well, we've just released a brand new Bring Harris Home gift box that came out last week, which is beautifully foiled. A little, I mean, there's been a lot of thought put into it. There's a whole new look to the brand. And as you see, coming out of the, the ashes in 2021, March, February, March time, you won't just see a new look to our gift set, but you'll see a whole new look to our brand. We are we are evolving. We are cha- we are going back to this beginning to start pushing out a whole new look, feel, etiquette of the brand from start to finish. So we are investing when other people are worrying. And if you know, two things will happen: it'll be a success or it won't. <laughs> so we we will keep moving forward. As I say, we have got a strategy in place. We have got some good ideas. We're working with an amazing marketing and design company. Um, we actually share the same design company as Johnson's of Elgin now, so we're, um, we're, we're placing our standards pretty high. Um, we have got real, real... We are not limiting our aspirations. You know, there is no need to say, oh, well, we just head for this turnover or we'll just do this this next year or whatever. We will keep reaching for the stars, you know. We will keep pushing. We will keep adding people that strengthen our team, that make our business stronger, that make me happier and take the pressure off of me, um, give me a better quality of life. Um, and that's that's what we're just aspiring to do every week. You know, so so if you and Kendra get fed up with Russell, jump on over. Yes, this is a great team. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Christine would let us. <laughs> oh, hey, even I wouldn't cross Christine. <laughs> Uh, well, well, on that note, Jamie, I just want to say thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're going to be doing a big thing about all the exciting Christmas products that Scotland are releasing. So we'll definitely be hearing from you again in the future. But for the time being, thank you very much. Yeah, and I'll also, I'll get the team here. We'll stick an SBN discount code on the website oh, um, from next week. Because this weekend, remember, it's Black Friday. So there's an amazing 25% of free delivery on our Black Friday deal this year. But we'll also then from next week, we'll have an SBN code that will run up to Christmas Eve to help everybody just take the the load off a wee bit leading up to Christmas. That's a a very generous offer. We'll have the links for the Black Friday details below and you can find the SBN discount stuff on the members portal. Thank you very much, Jamie. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. Perfect. Thank you now. Take care, guys. Bye. Some very passionate speakers again today. I love this little show. It's our seventh show and we've already had a great collection of guests sharing their stories and you can catch them all on replay via the SBN website and the attached link in this description. Over to Scott to share what's coming up. Yeah, it's been quite fun actually, hasn't it Kendra? I wasn't yeah. really sure how this was going to go or even how many episodes we were going to do, but now we've already had people on who we want to get back, let alone people we're still <laughs> yet to hear from. So. Um, but yes, so just a couple of things next week. Again, join in the celebrations on the 30th for St Andrew's Day. Um, uh, you can, there's still time to send in your videos, SBN members. So just a quick landscape video on your phone, wishing everyone a happy St Andrew's Day. We'll, we'll include that on the day, as well as sharing it around our social channels. Uh, and another thing to keep an eye out for is we are compiling a bunch of stuff together about all the exciting things happening around the festive period um, around Scotland. The members, Scottish goods, events you know, music, dancing, drinks, all sorts of fun. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. And thank you for watching the video. If you could share it around, we'd really appreciate it. The more people who get to see it means the more people who get to hear about all the wonderful things that are happening across the membership and what the members are doing. Yeah, thanks again to our guests today and to our audience. We all hope that you'll join us to celebrate St. Andrew's Day. And we'll see you all here again next week. Bye. Bye.